As a medical doctor, you know, it's very difficult for my colleagues to understand the simplicity of nutrition. We tend to complicate things, in my opinion. What would you say to any physician, medically trained, that is a skeptic about this lifestyle and that they tend to, you know, worry a lot about nutrition and micronutrients and deficiencies and if people follow this lifestyle? There are two approaches. Obviously, there's two approaches. We could, we could argue the minutia and and never convince anybody of anything right uh, or we can go to basic concepts and still never convince anybody of anything because there's no winners in an argument so i'm not going to argue the point i mean right. i spend my time more helping people who want help rather than trying to convince people that they want help or that they should do things my way. Right. Nonetheless, this doesn't answer the question. If the opportunity arose to, to educate someone, my first thought is to run with the concept of anatomy and physiology rule in our world. Yeah. Anatomy and physiology rule. Uh, and every species eats a specific diet according to their species based on their anatomy and physiology. This is so straightforward. There are no exceptions in the entire world of animal life. So we are told, except for humans, humans are an exception. But this makes no sense. There is no reasoning or reason given why we should be an exception. Right. We just told, oh, humans are an exception. We do not have a species-specific diet. And yet, we're also told that fruits and vegetables are good for us. We're told fruits and vegetables are good for us. We know from nutrition that, that fruits and vegetables contain all of the nutrients that we need. Uh, we know that children are, are allured to fruit. We know that, um, that early man could not possibly have hunted because he didn't have tools to do it. He didn't have the communication skills to do it. He couldn't run for 24 to 36 hours in order to run a deer down to the ground. He couldn't chase the lions off of a carcass that they had just killed. You know, what do you say here? Nice kitty kitty, now you've killed the animal, <laughs> give it to me. I mean, lions don't scare that easily. By the time the lions eat the carcass and the, and the other scavengers scavenge the carcass and then finally the vultures are picking away at the whatever's left. And you can chase vultures off of a, a carcass. They're, they're pretty easy to chase. But, I mean, you're talking about a carcass that is offendingly old <laughs> by this point. It's just offensive. Uh, fortunately, you know, vultures can, can handle the botulism that is most likely in that carcass by this point. Uh, they're cleaning up the earth for us, otherwise we'd all have died of botulism, it would be so rampant, but the vultures keep it in check. Right. Good for them. <laughs> but we're naturally drawn. We have color vision for a reason. We have our stereoscopic vision for a reason. We have teeth that look like all of the other animals that eat fruits and vegetables. We have hands and and fingers and nails and and two teeth and and binary binary um, baby systems however you want to call this I mean we don't have births of eight and ten litters of eight and ten we tend to have one or two uh, everything about us points us to being consumers of fruits and vegetables. This is our natural way and this is what the paleontologists say is that that's what we ate. It was easy to get because I mean a wolf is a crazy a crazy aggressive powerful creature but his preferred food is mice. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, their preferred food is mice. Um, bear's preferred food is a squirrel. I mean they don't 
no creature, even the ones that attack other creatures, don't want to get hurt in the process. They don't want to risk themselves, you know, because injuries can be life-threatening. They can get infected, bad things can happen. So even the most powerful carnivores prefer to eat food that's eat. I mean, lions chase down the weak, the infirm, the old, the babies, the stupid, uh, of whatever herd it is, right. okay? They don't go after the the most powerful, so because they don't want to get hurt in the process. We are no different than this. I mean, I can sneak up on a raspberry pretty safely, but if I tried to catch a squirrel, I would probably die. If I I couldn't catch the squirrel, but if I ever caught the squirrel, he'd probably kill me from infection. <laughs> you know, so. I mean, it's not worth trying to do this. It's it's easy to sneak up on an asparagus stalk and bite its head off. That's enough aggression for me, you know. So we see all that color out there. The the fruits lure us. Um, when I was a child, I was told an apple a day, eat an apple a day. I mean, I was little. They said eat fruits and vegetables. I was a teenager. They said eat fruits and vegetables. I was in college. They said eat fruits and vegetables. I went to medical school. They said eat your fruits and vegetables. Everybody's always told me fruits and vegetables are good for you. And then I come along and say, well, what would happen if I ate fruits and vegetables to the exclusion of everything else? What would happen if I ate the stuff that was good for me to the exclusion of everything that's not as good? And they go, oh, that would be bad for you. Too Don't much, do that. Too much sugar. You know, right. Or they'll say too much sugar. And I go, well, Every cell of the body is fueled by sugar. Check my blood sugar. I have no blood sugar problems. I've been following a raw vegan diet for 40 years. I have no blood sugar problems. I've checked up so many times. There's no issues. Uh, we understand. I mean, in the Journal of American Medical Association in 1959, there's an article explaining what causes diabetes. And what they explain is that too much lipids in the diet a high fat diet, a diet of more than about 20 to 30 percent of your calories leads you directly towards diabetes because the sugars can't exit the bloodstream, which is the definition of diabetes. Yeah. So, uh, so that goes against all the keto and paleo, Yeah, it's right? not news. I mean, okay, so if you eat a diet of all fat, you won't have you won't have sugar spikes. You won't tend to have di high diabetes problems. But life is not particularly sweet. <laughs> if all you're eating is fat and protein, I mean, it's not particularly sweet. We know for a fact that when you're on a high fat diet, you're heading straight towards heart disease. You're heading straight towards cancer. You're heading, heading straight towards arthritis. You're heading straight towards so many issues that are not worth trading in order, even if it did, it does not cure you of diabetes. It just means that you're not gonna have a, a spike in diabetes. You still have the tendency because you still can't get the sugar out of your blood. But if you go to a low fat diet, there's a way cool video made by a medical doctor uh, called How to Become a Diabetic in Six Hours. Have you ever seen this? No. Oh, it's beautiful. It's on YouTube, it's on Vimeo. Okay. Um, and 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 basically he just eats a bunch of takes his blood sugar shows it's low eats a bunch of fat watches the blood sugar go up 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 because the fats in the bloodstream block sugar's ability to get out of the bloodstream but this is not news this is since 1959 we've known this for a fact so so when i look at like oh fruit too much sugar no it can't be too much sugar it can't be too much sugar because this is what our forefathers lived on. It can't be too much sugar because we are designed to eat a diet. World Health Organization recommendations tell us that 3 to 10 percent of our calories from fat is enough, that 3 to 10 percent of our calories from protein is enough. Therefore we need more than 80 percent of our calories to come from carbohydrates. And no matter what carbohydrates we eat, we're going to convert them to glucose and fructose we're going to convert them to sugar or they just start out as sugar so i go for fruit it's easy to digest because the sugars require no digestion you can absorb them as is so thank you so much that's like a very convincing explanation